75 miles north of Las Vegas, in the heart of Nevada's desolate desert, lies a place so secret even top U.S. officials are clueless about what's inside. This place is such a secret that it took nearly 70 years before the United States government agreed to acknowledge that there was indeed a piece of land there. This place hidden from view is called a lot of names, but its most popular one is Area 51. The United States government says that it's a classified testing space for new aeroplanes and surveillance equipment. But to everyone else, Area 51 holds the things that the United States government is too afraid to agree exist. Aliens and spaceships, new ways of space travel, and even weapons of mass destruction. But how much of that is really true? Area 51 sits 83 miles northwest of Las Vegas, inside the sprawling Nevada Test and Training Range. Way back in 1955, the CIA carved it out as a secret testing ground and called it Paradise Ranch. This was a sarcastic nod to lure Lockheed workers to the desert, since they needed a secure location to develop secret inventions to make sure they won the space race, as well as any wars that might come their way. A location that had once been close to the blast zone of clandestine bomb tests was obviously a good place to achieve world dominance. And it did help them. Building from Area 51, the United States officially built several high-tech planes, including the U-2 and the Oxcart. There's not a lot known about what the base looks like from the sky, as it has been restricted airspace for as long as it's been in use, since it was the site of a lot of nuclear and atomic atmospheric bomb tests. With some tests even leaving parts of the base unvisitable in hazmat suits for up to six weeks. But a lot of what we do know about Area 51 comes from Google Maps. Although satellite imagery of the site has been heavily restricted, the base and some of its structures have been visible on Google Maps since 2018. Officially, the United States and the CIA chose Area 51 as part of a way to build planes that could keep an eye on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Initially, it was just a dusty airstrip surrounded by rugged mountains and endless sand and nicknamed Watertown for irony. The name of this isolated spot in Nevada is Watertown, and its very isolation is of the greatest importance. It was isolated off the grid and perfect for testing things the world shouldn't know about, like the U-2 spy plane. Planes that could fly higher than anything the Soviets or any other opposition had. But how does a simple test site turn into the most secretive spot on Earth? Well, fast forward a few years, and the planes of Area 51 are shown their true value. The Soviets are determined to find out how the United States is catching them off guard. And any information leak about these planes could be detrimental for the United States. And so the government decided to swear everyone to secrecy. Pilots sign oaths of silence. The base vanishes from maps, and even locals are kept in the dark. But the silence only made the attraction stronger. In the 1960s, strange lights started popping up in the Nevada sky. Although the CIA would claim that these were merely test flights, outsiders decided to make some conclusions of their own. But even as the rumors started to take root, the secrecy grew. More and more projects needed to be tested. And so the rumors that originally spread began to grow more and more, giving birth to new rumors. And eventually all these rumors shaped our view of Area 51 today. But how did all these rumors start? For that, we have to go back to Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. More than five years before Area 51 was even a thing. A mysterious object crash lands in Roswell, and the military immediately claims it's a weather balloon. Witnesses, however, claim it's BS. They share stories of seeing a UFO, strange metal, and even bodies. The CIA quickly tries to silence these rumors, but to no avail. The rumors quickly develop and people claim that this mysterious object went to what we now know as Area 51. But what was that so-called weather balloon? According to interviews, it was the work of two former Third Reich aeroplane designers named Walter and Raymar Horton. The source claimed the Horton brothers were involved in the flying disc crash in New Mexico. This flying disc was found by the Army and transported to the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base before being transferred to Area 51. The source claimed that they were one of the engineers who received the equipment and the beings who were in the craft. They claimed that the beings had been child-sized pilots 
and were part of a Soviet human experimentation program. They even said that the plan had been to cause panic in the United States, with the belief that a UFO had landed with aliens inside of it. Regardless of how believable the tale was, it got people talking, and soon even more rumors began to spread. On May 19, 1953, just days after a nuclear test rocked Yucca Flat, Nevada, conspiracy theorists said a disc-shaped object had plummeted from the sky, heading south toward Las Vegas before vanishing into the mountains. Two days later, people began to whisper about a crash near Kingman, Arizona, almost 175 miles south. Forty engineers were bussed down from Phoenix under cover of night, and they found a pristine 40-foot metallic craft with no scratches and four alien beings inside. The craft and its occupants were whisked away to Groom Lake, later known as Area 51, but that wasn't all. Then in 1957, an alien that came straight out of a sci-fi flick and was called Valiant Thor allegedly landed near Washington, D.C. and demanded to see President Eisenhower. Thor was escorted to the Pentagon, where he warned about nuclear weapons and offered cosmic advice. There's no hard proof to back this up, but UFO researchers say it's evidence of ETs meeting the Commander-in-Chief face-to-face, maybe even shaping the decisions they make today. But the conspiracies don't stop at the surface. Some say Area 51's real secrets lie underground, with claims of a vast network of bases linked by high-speed trains. Miners like Christian G. near Rachel, Nevada, claim the military has been digging since the 1950s, and hiding dirt with heap leaching to dodge suspicion. It's really no surprise that by the 80s, Area 51 had become a full-blown conspiracy magnet. However, with the consistent conspiracy theories, came an even larger increase in security. Area 51 is buried in the Nevada Test and Training Range. Inside, hundreds of square miles of restricted land and ringed by mountains. If you were thinking of stopping by, the closest that you could legally get is a dusty road off Highway 375. But even if you decided to go down that dusty road, you'd only find signs plastered around with the words, No Trespassing, Use of Deadly Force Authorized. Beyond those are armed guards nicknamed Camo Dudes for their camouflage gear. The Camo Dudes patrol in jeeps, and they are ready to run you off the instant you make a wrong turn. Even if you manage to avoid all these, motion sensors and cameras watch every inch of the facility. Even staff don't get to stroll in. They need top secret clearance, polygraphs, and whole nine yards. Anyone who is working at Area 51 gets flown in from Las Vegas on unmarked Janet planes, they land in a hidden terminal, and they get to work on inventions that you and I may never see. No surprise there, beyond all the extras, Area 51 is so remote, it's like a natural barrier. There's 80 miles of desert between you, me, and any answers. But that doesn't mean that people haven't tried to get in, though. In 2019, Area 51's secrecy hit peak absurdity, and then what started as a quick prank on social media turned into something that almost went out of hand. 3.5 million people expressed interest in attending an event organized by Maddie Roberts, a 20-something-year-old student from Bakersfield, California. The name of the Facebook event that led to some of the most viral memes and moments of that year, as well as a lot of sweating on part of the United States government was Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. As the name suggests, the plan was simple. They just had to charge at the base in large enough numbers that they would overwhelm security and finally see what was hidden inside. They planned to finally see the aliens, UFOs, and secret technology that the government had been hiding. The turnout, however, was less than expected. Maybe people got more worried as the day got closer. Maybe the government had something to do with it. But at the end of the day, out of 3.5 million who expressed interest, only around 6,000 people made it to the low-key summer event that September. Those who did make it didn't end up storming anything, and instead they did stuff like hatchet throwing and drinking limited edition alien-themed Bud Light beer. It felt more like a festival than anything else with alien costumes, music, and a lot of selfies. We can only imagine how happy the military was that they didn't do much else. However, the entire fiasco did help to show that Area 51's mystique was stronger than ever, and not going anywhere anytime soon. And while the jury is still out on whether there are aliens behind that heavy, guarded perimeter, there's also real stuff happening inside. Stuff we can actually prove. 
See, here's the twist. Area 51 is not just about aliens, UFOs, and other conspiracy theories. It's one of the most important facilities for scientific military breakthroughs. Since the 50s, multiple planes used to help win, stop, and prevent wars from even beginning have taken place. In the 50s, they built the U-2 plane. Then in the 60s, they test the SR-71 Blackbird, a Cold War legend. Then came the 80s, and they helped build the F-117 Nighthawk, the first stealth fighter, which was completely invisible to radar. How do we know this? Well, now declassified files confirm all these amazing inventions came directly from Area 51. Imagine that, all these inventions built in secret over Groom Lake, maybe with a little help from aliens even. Well, no matter how they built them, one thing is clear, they haven't stopped. Today, whispers hint at next-gen drones, hypersonic jets, and tech so advanced it just might be enough to explain those strange UFO sightings. Instead of aliens, it could just be tools that have helped change warfare forever. But what if there's more? What if the wildest theory isn't a theory at all? And here's where it gets insane. The final conspiracy theory, and the one that ties everything together, comes from a man who claimed to be one of Area 51's very own. It's 1989 and a man named Bob Lazar steps into the spotlight. He claims he worked at S2, a hidden site near Area 51, where he has been helping them reverse engineer alien spacecraft. He says that these flying disks are powered by Element 115, an element that no one even knew how to make. Lazar claimed he saw them up close, read documents on alien tech, and even spotted a craft in the hangar. The response? The government scrubbed his past, job records, school history, all gone. All that was left didn't seem to match with the story he told. Until it did. The Janet flights he mentioned turned out to be real. Element 115 was finally synthesized in 2003 and is now called Moscovium. So it meant that Lazar either is a genius liar, the key to Area 51's deepest secret, or a shrewd mix of the two, used by the government to keep the secrecy at its peak. Is there really alien tech hidden in plain sight? Is it being tested alongside stealth jets? It's twists like this that make you wonder, what's really out there in the desert? Now we know US presidents have definitely all been in the know about what's happening at Area 51, but what about the leaders around the world? Want to know who's being loved and who's being hated? Click on this video to learn more.